Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the next edition of uh, DSEI Insights. As we have promised when we started DSEI Insights, we would like to share with the global supply chain community the insights from digital supply chain transformation. And those insights are focused to be not only taught leadership-wise, but focused on the practical aspect of you know, the supply chain transformation, learnings from the companies who are doing it on the ground, as well as learnings from the research we do, specifically the applied research, which is related to hands-on inputs and information from the market. So today with me, it's an honor to have Vivek Gelani, who is a Digital Supply Chain Institute Director of Research. So welcome, Vivek. Thank you, Marco. Happy to be here. So Vivek, we selected a topic which is a very, very interesting topic, the topic of new customer. So as we know before, uh, knowing your customer has been a business mantra for decades, right? But in last few years, certain things changed, especially it changed towards the supply chain. So in that sense, supply chains became more customer centric. But through the research you have been doing with the Digital Supply Chain Institute uh, team, and as well with the Digital Supply Chain Institute global community, can you share with us what has changed? Yes, definitely, Marco. I think um, a supply chain has always focused on customer in a way, always talked about customer-centric approach. But in recent years, and specifically if we talked about the last two or three years, Customers has has been more increasingly aware of their purchasing power and like and onto on their buying decision as well. And with the rise of the e-commerce right now, or if you say direct to customer market, you have information uh, to social media, access to the internet. All of this uh, has empowered customer to have access to more information and have higher expectation for product quality, delivery speed, uh, transparency, sustainability expectation. And as a result of all of these evolving needs of the customer, and those needs are changing, um, not just on an annual basis or a six month basis, they are changing every day. Uh, previously, like 10, 10 years ago in supply chain, people used to do annual survey of the customer. Okay, what are the expectations? But nowadays, uh, their expectations are changing every day, every minute. And I think supply chain leaders, uh, leaders need to make sure that they tap into that information, tap into the social media information, the customer profile, make sure that they understand their customer's changing needs and make sure that they meet those needs uh, in the right way to make sure that the customer have a good customer satisfaction, they have a good customer experience. And there are several reasons why, um, and, and I, I think I, I talk more uh, later in, uh, in, in the call, but I think we'll, uh, just outline four of those is First of all, uh, their uh, uh, expectation are changing. Second one is increased competition on the internet, on the web free, or you talk about uh, the social media. Next one is customer empowerment. And after that is increased demand for, uh, for transparency on where the actual products came from, where are they manufactured, how it's being delivered, and what kind of uh, labor uh, is involved into the uh, process of delivering that product from end to end. So I think those are the main um, key points that I, th I think supply chain ne leaders need to stay aware of and make sure that they count those in when they, they think about customer centric. And at DSCI, we actually say that overall it was customer centric, but now supply chain leaders and their company needs to be customer present with that expectation. Um, so yeah, Marco. Thank you, Vivek. You know, li listening to you when you said, uh, you know, it, we need to be, customer present rather than uh, customer centric now and listening to all components you have shared it seems like the relationship with the customer today is more complex than supply chain on its own uh, with all the moving parts uh, you have been talking about and uh, the expectations with digital channels and then covid as well accelerated um, having that in mind and knowing what you shared i think uh, this is the second year in a row that uh, dsei is doing this research and uh, as I know, and as you have shared, uh, the, in general, this will be an ongoing project on yearly basis. So the notes can be compared and the evolution of the relationship with the customer can be followed. Can you share with us, you know, what are the new insights 
from the last survey up to this survey, what you have located? Definitely, Marcus. I think the survey reveals a uh, few, in, uh, definitely more uh, more insights uh, the, than I think supply chain leaders uh, need, need to look at. And, and I think there are uh, customer expectations that are changing. And some of, I won't list out like, like the, the, there are like 10 or 12 of those, but I'll list out the top three that we found out. And the first one was the factor influencing the return decisions, right? So why customer uh, has returned a particular product or services, why they were not... Uh, satisfied with, with, with that product or the service. So the top three factors are around uh, pro damage item. Uh, the product is damaged, um, incorrect product or size, a product does not match the description or the service doesn't match that expectation as well. So these are the findings um, that highlight the importance of improving the quality and the accuracy of the product, right? So supply chain leaders need to make sure that uh, in the manufacturing process, in the delivery process or in their logistic process, they need to make sure they have the accuracy and I think they can use the AI and ML technology to make sure that the product quality is up to the mark of the expectation of the customer, right? The second insight that, that was really um, uh, coming out of this research was factor influence, influencing the purchasing, purchasing decisions as well. And there were top five factors that we found out. First one was customer reviews. We had product availability, speed of delivery, price, and also uh, availability of various products in terms of um, different variety of the products available at the time for consumer to choose from. Uh, and this highlights actually importance of uh, how the products are easily accessible for them to order, uh, how um, fast and efficient are, is company in delivering them uh, in the delivery time. So I think that's where supply chain leaders also need to focus on. And the third, um, uh, insight that we found was really highlighting was transparency in the supply chain. So the survey, our recent survey found out that 41% of, of the customer want to have transparency into where the products are made and where they are coming from. This highlights the growing demand for transparency as well as the need for any supply chain leader. And this does, doesn't really turn, but any supply chain organization to have uh, to incorporate transparency into their operations, right? Uh, not just as a, as a report, that goes out to to the shareholder, but as uh, as a as a and attach it to the product that goes out to all the customers because customers are are the ultimate stakeholders that that going to value your company and your supply chain and how you deliver to them. So I think that's where supply chain leader needs to focus on moving forward. So those are the like main three insights that we got was the factor influencing the return decisions, factor influencing the purchasing decisions, and the transparency into the supply chain. Very, very interesting, Vivek. And uh, one thing you mentioned I would like to underline and repeat, and that's that basically our main stakeholder in today's supply chain is the customer, which is a, a big demographic change you know, from uh, the previous times. Having that in mind as well, uh, what you shared, it uh, looks like that the overall visibility and transparency from first to last mile is important to the new customer not only to the companies, partners, and suppliers who are part of the value chain, but now for the customer as well, in a sense of you know, having fair and transparent pricing, seeing the inputs of you know, the, let's say, experiences from uh, the other customers, understanding the ESG side of it, and also you know, having transparency and visibility on the way of uh, where and how the product has been uh, created. So th this really, changes the paradigm on one side, but it also helps companies for the future focus on the right areas to improve and then keep happy and loyal customers. So having all these things in mind, how would you say that, you know, uh, comparing the two researches, do you see any trends emerging for that? We were talking now about the differences, but are there any trends that you see we can follow? Yeah, de definitely, Mark. I think comparing um, 2021 to 2022, uh, we also want, because uh, up until this point, uh, supply chain was always seen as a back end of any company, was never the front runner of, of the any company, front part of the any company where they are the decision makers that wrote the last five years, and especially in the last few years, supply chain has always been the top of the town and has always, been, and now customer has been talking about supply chain. So we all are, also wanted to know about uh, how supply, like does the customer know about supply chain? Do they know the definition of it? So that was 
Uh, the survey highlighted that there was an increase in awareness about supply chain and the knowledge about supply chain from 70% to 90% from 2021 to 2022. So that was really high where now customer knows how supply chain works and they know they have the knowledge about the supply chain. Uh, there was also increased awareness from 63 to 65% after the COVID pandemic about supply chain. And there was also one more data where uh, privacy is one of the more uh, uh, concern for, for customers nowadays, but people are still willing to share the data for personalized product recommendation, where 41% are okay with sharing the data compared to just 28 uh, in 2021. So definitely that is, uh, we see those kind of trends where uh, as long as you are, uh, or a company is providing a, a better uh, privacy product, protection on the data and they are not sharing outside, their organization, they are willing to share the data. There's one more uh, uh, interesting fact was the price. Price remain at, at the highest point of factor influencing the uh, purchasing decision. Com it was still the highest uh, factor in 2021. It is still highest. It was just 75, but now it's 79 compared uh, compared to 2021. And, and if you look at it, I think the, mark the way market is shifting the, the way global GDP is growing right now and the, the talk of the recession right now, I think people are more aware of the price right now. And I think it's going to stay there for at least a year uh, moving forward. And Marco, going back to your transfer, transparency comment, I think I think companies need to do more in terms of trans, 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 transparency because that's going to stay there. It's not going to just help customer but it's going to help you internet as well. After COVID pandemic and, and, and the recent uh, global conflict going on, right? The companies need to focus on their agility and flexibility within the supply chain and getting the transparency for customers, but also for your operations will help you uh, diversify your, your supply base, diversify your operation base, diversify your manufacturing base, and it will ultimately help you deliver your products um, uh, on the right time to the right customers. So I think transparency is also one of the um, uh, highlighting points coming out of that. And I think uh, uh, it's, it's a win-win for both if, if they do that. Very, this has been very insightful, especially uh, explaining uh, how the new customer is now more aware of what supply chain is and how it functions. And that notion maybe can drive us towards the potential on the other side that if people are getting more knowledgeable about it, more engaged with it, maybe the future of talent in supply chain will be much better than it was before because the customer is now you know, going towards understanding it in a better way and maybe they'll go uh, towards the company. But putting, uh, putting let's say, a, a joke aside, I think the side which you shared uh, related to the transparency and pricing can be seen as well as a trend where, where through new customer and their engagement, which is now through digital channels, real time in a way, we can also measure the pulse of the market. And the pulse of the market is, as you rightly said, yet focused on the price competitiveness in most area because of the uh, global macroeconomy situation. And today customers do that without under quotes a survey, because if you follow your channels and your customers, you can learn the trends uh, of the market in a right way. So keeping our promise as well uh, from where we started, Vivek, I think uh, what will be good to try to close with uh, would be something to see what would be the actions that supply chain leaders can take going forward, having in mind the things uh, we have discussed and uh, let's say the new setup of parameters which the new customers is setting. So through your research and work with the various different global companies, what would be your advice for the actions? Um, definitely, Marco. So I, I think there are several steps that supply chain leaders take. And the first one, I think uh, uh, the supply chain leaders need to transfer their supply chain, need, need to make that from the back end of the office to the front end of the office to be at the center of the table with the other functions within the company, right? So I think companies need to do front side flip of their organization and especially their supply chain uh, to make it a more digital supply chain and transform that. Um, and, and to do that, we have, a, we, uh, at DSCI, we have written a good paper about it, a, a good action paper that I think supply chain leader can review and take some of those ex action items from it. Other than that, I think one of the that key highlight uh, and key action that we see is up until now, after COVID, companies were focusing on scenario planning 
on if this kind of conflict happens, what are the action that um, supply chain leaders can take to uh, to manage their operations. But just to use that concept and use it for the customers on understanding every day, run 10 to 15 scenarios on how customers' expectations are changing, that will help them change their operations and change their manufacturing um, and make sure they are on top of the needs of the customers. I think that that can be a really good action that supply chain um, leaders can take. And when we talk about some of the survey findings, I think um, based on that, I think if company can improve the product quality and accuracy, to reduce the likeliness of return, that can be a good one. They can offer a wide uh, variety of products and information related to transparency, reviews, and availability, and how to easily access those and order those products. That can be a really good for customers and also for the company as well. Uh, they can fo focus on delivering fast and efficiently de uh, efficient uh, delivery times. Um, they can also incorporate uh, uh, feedback uh, in into the needs, right? So whenever they like it was a sales function before but now it's a supply chain function the supply chain function needs to make sure that they are reviewing what customers are saying about them on their website on their platform on different social media platform uh even on uh, on different podcasts and anywhere they are mentioning your uh, your brand or your company you need to be aware of that and how your brand image is changing that's going to change customers perspective that's going to change their customers expectation and that's how you need to deliver on those kind of expectations. So I think those are the main actions I think supply chain leaders can take. And overall, I think after, after COVID, all of this, they need to build in the agility and flexibility into the supply chain when they do that, uh, to make sure that when next conflict happen, they are not out on the water and they don't have anything uh, to deliver on. So it seems like, uh actionability on one side and then as well uh, uh, let's say flexibility are very important things and uh, the new customer basically is now maybe engaged more than ever with the brand but on the other side they bring a certain acceleration towards the transformation and then keeping a happy and loyal customer with the activities you shared with Ek gives a competitive advantage to the company and it becomes a relationship-driven, uh, let's say, uh, focus on transforming supply chain hand in hand, which is new comparing to what it was. So we can conclude on a positive note, Vivek, that there are so many changing and moving parts, if you agree. But on the other side, now we have customer as part of our supply chain, and they will be as well vested, engaged, uh, active members of the supply chain if they are happy with the product and delivery, right? Yeah, yeah. so I, I'll, I'll just close with this one, right? I think the customers are the main stakeholder for any organization or for any supply chain, right? And those are the one, one should be driving the decision around the operations and the products and the services because those are the ones that, that, that are creating revenue or are gonna increase your revenue or decrease your revenue, right? And to do this, I think at DSTI, I, and, and the insights that we have is going to differ from company to company on how you operate, operationalize those insights and how you put an action plan towards it. But the front side flip uh, framework that we have developed can help you uh, put that framework around it, put those action plan around it. So definitely I recommend um, the viewers to at least to re read the front side flip action paper that we released last year, also read the whole new customer report. Uh, and make sure how you can align your company's uh, actions according to um, the front side flip framework that can help you transform your supply chain into a digital supply chain that uh, fulfills the needs of your customers. Dear Vivek, thank you for uh, being with us. We look forward to more insights from uh, your research laboratory going forward. We'll definitely reach out on the new areas and then as well following through the uh, new customer segment and your continuous research and i would like to thank you for being with us and thank everybody for listening and support and uh, stay tuned for more actionable digital supply chain institute insights thank you mark no, happy to be here so definitely we'll share more insight on, on new topics that we, we are doing research thank you